in this session i'm going to talk about concurrency control okay or how do we ensure that concurrent transactions are carried out in an isolated manner just remember that we looked at acid properties where this c is whoops where this i is isolation okay which basically tells me that my transactions should be executed in such a manner that they seem as if they were executed in a serial manner or they are executed in an isolated manner so that i do not have some negative effects on the database or i do not end up being in a database which is in a consistent non consistent state rather okay so i'll talk about these techniques which ensure isolation okay so why do we need concurrency techniques because we want to ensure isolation okay so first set of techniques that we are going to look is lock based techniques or lock based protocols okay let's see what a lock is a lock is a mechanism that ensures mutual exclusion mechanism that ensures mutual exclusion okay mutual exclusion and what is mutual exclusion mutual exclusion is the property that if we have a single resource and there are two processes trying to access this okay even this wants to work on it and even this wants to work on it then at a time only one process should be able to update this resource okay that is called mutual exclusion so here our resource is a data item right i will use a different color over here my resource is a data item and instead of processes i've got what i've got i've got transactions okay so i want that every transaction should be able to access a resource or a data item in a mutually exclusive manner so we have two types of locks or rather basically we have two types of locks a broad category if i may suggest then that broad category is a shared lock or a exclusive lock okay so in a locking based protocol what happens is if my transaction t1 wants to access a data item x let's suppose he wants to read x okay then he is going to lock x okay he is going to lock x and that lock would be of type shared lock okay so when t1 needs to write x he is going to apply a shared lock on x and only then can he or can that transaction read the value from x similarly if t1 wants to write x then he is going to apply a exclusive lock okay an exclusive lock allows you to read as well as write exclusive is read as well as write okay this is read spare my my handwriting okay and a shared lock is only used for writing so how does a lock ensures mutual exclusion it ensures mutual exclusion by let's suppose x is locked in an 